Hello everybody, it's Alicia and I hope you're having a wonderful day. It's Tuesday, so it's time for another How Do I video and this one has been very requested. You guys want to know how do I take photos in Second Life? Or more specifically how I take photos in Second Life. I'm just going to say I'm not much of an artist, I don't really have any skills in art, digital art, any art, basically. If you ever follow me on Plurk, I go to those painting classes sometimes and I suck. Um, the fact that anybody likes my photos in Second Life at all is kind of a miracle. I can tell you what I don't like, but I can't always do things. I don't have those kind of skills. But I can kind of show you, because over the past couple of years, I've gotten to where I really enjoy my own photos. Um, but of course, I still have times where I'm like, oh my god, I can't believe I just did that. <laughs> uh, yeah. If you're looking for a really, really good tutorial on photoshopping and all that sort of stuff, just look on YouTube. There are so many, and I watch tutorials a lot because I am always trying to improve my skills. So, tutorials, YouTube, fabulous. Okay, so I'm not going to show you guys how I Photoshop my photos when I'm finished. What I'm going to show you is how to set up just a basic, good, clean, raw shot in Second Life. Um, I think that if you don't start with a good base photo, and almost no amount of Photoshop is going to help unless you are just an insanely great digital artist. Since I'm not, my photos that I take need to be almost near perfect as it is. And sometimes they are and sometimes they're not. I don't know. The one that I did for my blog post today, um, actually I had to take a couple of different ones and do a lot of like work on the arm part because the arm was in the skirt and it took a lot of time and then the power went out and I had to do it all over again and uh anyway um so we're just gonna do like a basic raw decent shot and um we'll, we'll do a profile picture because people like profile pictures all right so what I'm gonna do is I'm going to pull out a pose stand. I don't have a pose stand for this pose. I'm going to be using uh, a pose from the High Society pack from Nantra. I love Nantra and I love this set. I love a lot of pose stores. Um, I use Kirin a lot. I also use uh, Everglow and um, Triple O Studio or OOO or I'm not actually sure how she pronounces the name of her store, but there's three O's and it says studio. Um, love, love, love those. I love Lay Poppycock because um, they do a lot of poses with, um, with props and I like props. And then of course I do poses myself, but I don't really do single poses. Um, I tend to do couples poses and stuff like that. Alright, so because this is a headshot, we don't have to worry about hiding the pose stand. And also, I'm not going to bother pulling my fingers out of my hip. I use the Any Pose HUD for adjusting, but since I'm not going to be showing my hands, I'm not even going to worry about it. That's, <laughs> that's kind of my whole thing. Alright, so we're going to do a headshot. And you see, I'm posed up and everything. Um, I want to get closer to my head, but sometimes getting, like, scrolling in close can make it a little distorted. So what I'm going to do is control zero. Do you guys remember me talking about that in one of my videos? I'm going to do that twice and then scroll out just a little bit. Okay, or not. <laughs> All right. And that just kind of makes it look a little cleaner when you're doing a headshot. All right, so next we're going to do lighting and lighting is very important. So we're going to go into preferences and graphics and there are actually photo tool buttons uh, that you can use for um, for Firestorm. I 
don't really use them. I, I know how, but I don't because I'm just used to it this way. So if you find that the uh, photo tools buttons work better for you, you do you. All right, so we're going to turn on advanced lighting and that is going to pop on our shadows. And as you can see here, I've got the sun and moon and projectors on. I'm also going to turn on local lights. I don't think that's going to do anything for this one, but just in case. Um, my avatar shadows are complex. You can do simplify, optimize, or complex. I do complex. I don't know why somebody told me to. That's, <laughs> that's what I'm doing. Um, I have my objects and sculpts LOD up to four, and that's just basically an everyday setting for me. If you don't have a really good computer, play around with that. Um, I could I could go lower and everything would still look fine, but I just keep them at four because why not, right? And then over in my hardware settings, I've got all of these checked. My anti-aliasing is at eight, and what else? Um, rendering. If you can play with the quality of your shadows, like with the slider, it's gonna help a lot on how pixelated or not pixelated your shadows are. Also, uh, as far as like pixelated shadows go, playing with your draw distance can also help a lot. And uh, let's turn on depth of field. And as you can see, that kind of makes things blurry behind me. And that looks pretty good for the most part. And then you just kind of have to start playing around with angles and and things like that. Um, as you can see with the depth of field on, this side of my head looks a little bit blurry. So that may or may not come out in a photo. I find that for me, when I turn on depth of field, um, it's not as blurry in the photo as it looks in world. But if it bothers you, if you think that it might, just play around with sliders until you get basically what you want. Okay. And honestly, that is that is pretty much all of Second Life Photography. Just play around. You know, you have you have the ability to do it, so just play around with sliders. You're not gonna break anything. If you crash, you come back. It's not a big deal. Alright. And I don't, I like expressions on my face, so that's kind of why I stick with a logo head. I think that the logo heads have the prettiest expressions. Um, because I like to smile in my photos, and I like to show joy and things like that. If you like to stare dead-eyed at the camera, be my guest. But we're going to smile for this photo. I'm going to play with that, and uh... Let's see. These eyes? No. These eyes. And down. Let's stick with that. Okay. So now I'm smiling. I look like me. Um, you can also use, like, Fate, uh, Fate Wear, or Fate Eyes, has an eye poser, and you can use that to, like, make your eyes steady. I don't really care right now. We'll just have my eyes going all over the place. And then you just open up your sky presets, and you start looking for a preset that works for you and this is what I spend most of the time doing it's just looking for a good uh, wind light setting that has shadows and all that and I think that looks pretty okay the shadows aren't blocking my face but you can still see that I have them all right and then you can see everything looks good so we're ready to do our snapshot. Now when you get to your snapshot, you may find that the angle doesn't actually work for you. Like I don't, I don't know, I think I want it a little bit different. And then, um, okay. The bigger you take your photo, the better it can be because you have more room to work with it. Right now, I take mine, uh, the width is 4200 and then the height is whatever. When I hit constrained proportions, 
a lot of people take them at like 5,000 by 5,000. Your computer may not handle that. It just, it might not. Um, you can do just one of the presets here and that's, you can see that kind of takes away some of the sides here. Do whatever your computer can handle. Um, this works for me right now. I could go to 5,000. I choose not to because I don't really see the need. Uh, you might. I probably wouldn't go higher than that. I don't even know if you could go higher than that. You probably can. Um, and then keep it as a PNG because that's going to be your, uh, your cleanest quality. And then I'm just going to save it. And I always save mine to my desktop, so in any given session, uh, like a, I'm doing a blogging photo, I usually have like 20 of this, almost the exact same picture. Sometimes just the wind light has changed just a little bit. Um, so my desktop is usually a mess. But once you take your photo, then just go to where you saved your photo and open it up. And there we have the photo that you took, and I think that looks pretty good. Um, of course, when I get to Photoshop and everything, I'll do some lighting changes and all that. Um, but if you, you know, you just look at it, everything looks pretty good. The shadows are good. They're pretty clear. Uh, nothing is too insane. And it looks good. If you didn't like that wind light, if you think that that wind light is too white or you wanted it shadowier or something like that, just find another wind light and just play around with the sliders, the angle, the timing. Um, there's so many things you can play with to make things the way you want them. You know, you just, just play around. And I think that's really the, uh, the biggest thing that you can do is just playing around. Yeah, so now we have this. Um, if you decide that you don't like depth of field, you don't have to have it on. You can just turn that off. No big deal. That kind of made everything a little bit more clean. Take your picture again. And then you can open it up again. See? Very pretty. I actually like this. And it'll work well for a profile picture or a headshot or anything like that. Clean shadows. Everything looks good. If you use Firestorm in the snapshot window, there are filters that you can play with, kind of like Instagram. They're not like the best filters in the world. There's not a whole lot of adjusting that you can do to them to make them not so bright. But hey, you know, you may find that you like the filter and you can take your picture with the filter. And then you don't really have to do anything else because hey, black and white always looks good, right? Right. So that is how I do my photos. And then, of course, later I will take it to Photoshop and I will add stuff and uh, smooth things out here and there using liquify or blur or smudge or whatever it is I'm having, I happen to be using that day. But that is how I do them. If you have any other questions, please feel free to ask. But again, I'm not a digital artist, so you will probably find much better tutorials for Second Life Photography on YouTube from other people who are way better at it than I am. But that is it for me. If you like this video, please give me a thumbs up and hit the subscribe button if you haven't already. I'll be doing another giveaway when I get to 500 subscribers and we are so close to that, you guys. Oh my goodness, you all are just amazing. But until next time, I love you guys, and I'll see you soon.